So in our last uh, tutorial, we did talk about the applications of uh, the solar uh, electric power or the solar electric system as uh, we mentioned some of the areas of application. So today in, in this, in this uh, particular session, I want us to look at uh, what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of solar electric power. So we are going to look at the advantages and the disadvantages. So we are going to start by looking at the advantages. Advantages of solar electric power. So when you talk about uh, the advantages of solar electric power, one of the major advantages is that uh, they usually consume no fuel. So uh, the first advantage is that consume, they consume no fuel. They usually consume no fuel. And that is to say that uh, they are freely available. Uh, the sunlight is freely av available during the day and can be converted directly into electricity. And therefore, you will not have uh, there is no fuel cost and there is no cost uh, that is associated with purchasing, storing, or, in, or even transporting a fuel. And therefore, that is a very, very important advantage. Another advantage that we can talk about as number two. Number two, we can talk about uh, uh, another advantage that whereby we can say that uh, when the solar energy produces electricity, they usually produce it very quietly without uh, giving off exhaust gases or even the pollutants or even the noise. Uh, and that is to say that the sound pollution is uh, uh, eliminated. So we can simply say that uh, under these advantages, we can talk about it as being quiet. Quiet. It is very, very quiet. Very quiet in the sense that there is no exhaust uh, uh, gases, so there is no uh, air pollution, we also don't have the noise pollution as opposed to what happens with the generator. The generator usually make a lot of noise when it is uh, made to be, when it is put on and that one is not going to happen as far as the solar uh, uh, energy system is concerned. And therefore we can conclude that it is very quiet. Another very important uh, advantage is that it requires less maintenance. It usually requires comparatively, you can say it requires comparatively little maintenance. Requires comparatively little maintenance. Comparatively little maintenance. Requires comparatively little maintenance. So when you talk about that, you will find that uh, in most cases, uh, the solar modules do not have moving parts and they can last for a very long time. It is, they are always guaranteed over a, 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 about uh, over 20 years. And <clears throat> they have, and therefore we can say that they have low maintenance, cost, low maintenance cost as well as they are also very durable. The other advantage uh, that we can mention is that uh, they are economical for small applications. So we can talk of being economical, economical for small applications. They are economical for small applications. So when you talk about being economical for small applications, uh, uh, we are talking about the applications where uh, the power demand is uh, way below or between three to five kilowatts per day. Uh, in this case, they are particularly cost effective when you use a solar PV system. Another uh, advantage is uh, that uh, they can always be tailored to size. They can also always be tailored to size. They can be customized. They, tailor, they are tailored to the size of the application that is needed, be it lighting, pumping, or audiovisual, audio and they are easily expanded as the demand increases. So we can also we can say that uh, they are tailored to size. So we can talk of this one as being tailored to size. They are tailored to size. So in that case, we are simply saying that when if you need uh, a bigger, uh, uh, if, 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 if your load demand is bigger, then from the design, the design, the, the person carrying out the design will just come up with the appropriate design for you. So you don't need to, uh, to go, uh, there is no particular design that exists for all. And therefore, it can always be customized to the use 
of the customer. So that is now what we can talk about as far as being tailored to size is concerned. Number six, the sixth, the sixth advantage uh, we can talk about, another, another advantage that we can talk about is that they are always safe uh, when properly installed and designed. They are safe when properly installed and designed. Safe when properly installed and designed. They are safe when properly installed and designed. So in, in, when, when you talk about uh, the safety here, then uh, we, we are looking about, uh, we are talking about the risks of electric shock, usually, which is always very low, with the 12 uh, and 24 volts DC systems. And in that case, there is also uh, less fire risk than if a fuel is used like the kerosene, you can also, or, or any combustible fuel, or even the generator solution. So uh, in this case, uh, you'll find that uh, they are safe when properly installed. Another advantage that uh, we can talk about is their reliability. They are reliable. Reliable. They are reliable. So when you talk about them being reliable, uh, this one is they are reliable even under harsh conditions. You'll find that uh, the PV systems have proven their reliability by preventing costly power fuels, uh, no, not power fuel, but power failures uh, when, where continuous operation is critical. Whenever you have a continuous operation, which is critical, you can talk about in the theaters, you can talk about areas uh, that need continuous supply. You can always have a solar as a backup system. Or you can even have a solar uh, as the main and the other one as the back, backup system. And then you use the intelligent uh, uh, controller in order to decide which one is able to supply at a given time. And therefore, the solar is very, very reliable. The other one that uh, we can talk about, the other advantage that we can talk about is the modularity. We can talk about uh, the modularity. We can talk about the modularity, uh, the, the photo of PV modularity. So number eight, we can talk about PV modularity. PV modularity. So when you talk about the PV modularity in this case, then we find that the modules, the solar modules can be added incrementally. We can add the solar modules incrementally uh, uh, until uh, whatever is needed to be supplied. You can always increase the available power. So you can increment it until it meets the requirement or rather the demand that is needed. So we can talk about the PV modularity. You can add several modules uh, to that particular system in order to increase the available power. Then we can talk about another advantage, which is the independence. 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 So when you talk about the independence, then you'll find that uh, many residential users usually uh, like uh, a system uh, or, or that is independent from the uh, other utilities as a primary motivation for adopting this particular technology. So you'll find that uh, you can even buy your own system in your own house, or maybe someone can make a grid, uh, his, own, his own grid and supply maybe a village, and in that case, it will not be dependent on what comes from the national grid. And therefore, you will have a continuous power supply as long as your, systems, your system is okay. Another advantage that uh, we can talk about is uh, uh, the electric grid decentralization. Electric grid decentralization. Electric grid de decentralization. So when you talk about the electric grid decentralization, then we are only talking about small-scale decentralized power, usually reduce the possibility of outages uh, of the electric grid. So uh, when, when, when it is decentralized, then there is a reduced possibility of power outage because each and every system will be almost standalone and therefore not dependent on what comes. Uh, from the national grid. 
We can also have high altitude performance. High altitude performance. High altitude performance. You'll find that um, there is always an increased insulation at high altitudes. That is making uh, using uh, PV systems advantageous since the power output is optimized. Uh, in, on contrary, when you talk of the diesel uh, generator, at higher altitudes, they must always be derated because of the losses in efficiency and power. And therefore, that one is a very, very important advantage as far as uh, the uh, PV systems are concerned. Now, I want us to look at uh, the disadvantages. So now let us, after looking at the advantages, we looked at the several advantages. Uh, and of course, we know that um, whatever has advantages must have disadvantages. So after looking at several advantages, we can now look at what are the disadvantages of, electric, of solar electric power. So what are some of the disadvantages of solar electric power? So the first disadvantage is uh, we can talk of high initial cost, or we can simply say that uh, uh, the PV systems usually have higher upfront costs, which we refer to as high initial costs. So higher upfront costs, costs higher upfront costs, which we can stop off, high initial cost. High initial cost. We can talk of high initial cost. And you'll find that in this case, uh, the cost, even if uh, we talk about the solar PV, cost to be more economical than the generators or any other combustible fuels used. Uh, over the over its lifetime, it is always uh, often uh, difficult for people with a low income to access cash in order to buy the systems upfront. So you'll find that uh, because of what we talked about uh, in the introductory part of the solar resource, whereby we did say that uh, uh, for the solar uh, electric for, for the solar electric uh, system, we usually re require uh, several equipment, and the equipment that uh, we talked about is that. Uh, uh, the first one we did talk about, you need to have the modules. Uh, and then after the modules, uh, the modules will give you a DC. Uh, and most of the systems that we use uh, are also in AC. So therefore, there is also a need in order to convert the power to AC systems. And that for the, in that case, you are going to need the inverter. And after the inverter, again, there is also a need. Because the solar energy is not always available at night there is a need to store that, and therefore there is also the, the battery. All this is what makes the higher upfront cost to be high, or the higher initial cost, and that is a major disadvantage. The other disadvantage that we can talk about uh, is that uh, the most of the grid PV usually require batteries in order to store power, and the batteries usually require maintenance and must be replaced uh, at the end of their lives. So the performance of the PV system is always dependent on the quality of the batteries uh, that are available in the local market or available uh, availability of imported batteries. So there is also the need that there is a battery cost. The battery cost, which usually uh, have end of life, they usually have their end of life. And therefore, when they have their end of life, they must be replaced. And again, these batteries also require maintenance. So it is also very, very important. So the battery will also be as equipment, as an equipment that, has, that is being bought. Of course, the battery is uh, uh, the backbone of uh, uh, a solar energy uh, system. With, the back, with, with good batteries, the system is bound to perform well. And therefore, uh, the battery cost may be prohibitive in terms of maintenance and also replacement at the end of their lives. The other one is uh, uh, number three. We can talk of the solar PV systems. They usually must be, uh, <coughs> they usually require efficient uh, or DC appliances. This often uh, cost more, uh, especially when you talk about uh, the AC appliances. So, uh, because 
This one, the, the, the solar is always in, 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 in DC. So, require, we can talk of it as require DC appliances. They usually require DC appliances. But as we had mentioned earlier, uh, several equipments that usually use electricity don't uh, have, we, we, we have, we, we don't have most of the DC appliances. And even if they exist, they may be very, very expensive. And in that case, it is uh, uh, very, very important that that particular DC uh, uh, is converted or is changed to AC because the appliances uh, that are available in the market are in form of AC. And therefore, uh, that one will also bring about an in uh, a, a, a cost in the form of the inverter that will be used in order to uh, bring about such like a solution. Another disadvantage that we can talk about as far as uh, the solar is concerned, the, the solar uh, electric power is concerned, is that uh, the PV systems must always be designed by qualified technicians. So we can say that they must be designed by qualified technicians. They must be designed by qualified technicians. <clears throat> they must be designed by qualified technicians. So you'll find that the reason why most of the solar PV systems fail is because uh, in most cases, people don't usually uh, want to get a good design. They always uh, talk of uh, uh, maybe a water solar uh, panel. Maybe you can come and install. But what should always happen is that uh, you should call a professional or a, a solar technician in order to come and carry out a design according to your load requirement. And if it is done by somebody who is not qualified or by somebody who may not be uh, having uh, enough knowledge on that, then the system is bound to fail. And then you will always blame uh, the, 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 the solar for not performing. But the problem may be in the design. And therefore, it must be designed by qualified technicians. Another one uh, that uh, another disadvantage uh, that we can talk about is that the large standalone system often need to be backed up by uh, maybe pe petroleum generators. So we can talk about uh, back. They may be large systems need backup. Large systems may need backup. <clears throat> large systems may need backup, uh, and this is always very, very important. You can always use uh, uh, petrol fuel generators or even the wind power system in order to supply during the peak use or the cloudy periods, and that one will be very, very important. So they will need a backup, and this one will always be during, during the peak use, during peak use, or during cloudy weather or during cloudy weather, or during cloudy weather. Another uh, disadvantage uh, that we can talk about is that the solar electric systems are not economical for thermal loads, such as cooking, water, heating, or ironing clothes. So they are not always economical for thermal loads. So we can simply say that they are not economical for thermal loads, the solar, uh, electric power, are not always economical for thermal loads. And the thermal loads we are talking about cooking, we are talking about water heating, or even ironing of clothes. Another one, another disadvantage that we can talk about is the variability. Variability, the variability uh, of the available solar radiation. Variability of the available solar radiation. So available solar radiation. Variability of the available solar radiation. So when you talk about the variability of the available solar radiation, you'll find that the variation in climate as well as the weather usually greatly affects the, out, the, the, the power output of any solar-based energy system. During the cloudy uh, 
during the cloudy weather, you will find that there will be low, uh, there will be little or low insulation. And in that case, with the low insulation, that one will also eventually affect the output of the modules. And therefore, there will be a variability in the output as far as the radiation uh, that is uh, obtained is concerned. Another uh, disadvantage is always uh, the energy storage. We can talk about the energy storage. We can talk about the energy storage. Energy storage. So when you talk about the energy storage, you'll find that the solar usually uses the, the battery for storage, uh, increasing the cost, the size, and the complexity of the system. So the energy storage, which is always the battery, and this one usually increases the cost. It always increase, it increases the size as well as the complexity of uh, the whole system. Then we can also talk about efficiency improvement. Efficiency improvement. Efficiency improvement. So when you talk about the efficiency improvement, you'll find that the cost-effective uses of the PV usually require high efficiency approach uh, to energy consumption. And therefore, this one usually dictates replacing the ineffective appliances. So that is also another uh, disadvantage. So we can also talk about another disadvantage, which is number 10. We can talk about the education. And uh, the education, uh, another disadvantage can always, we can talk about education whereby under education we can simply say that uh, few people usually understand the value of solar energy and also the feasibility. And this particular lack of information slows the market for such like uh, techno technological growth. And therefore, it prohibits several people from using the solar electric energy power. So those are some of uh, the disadvantages that uh, we may discuss. There may be several disadvantages that, are, that may have been left out, but uh, uh, you, that is just uh, for uh, what we could uh, get today. So we are going to look at uh, uh, other areas, like maybe now when we, talk, when we come uh, to the next session, we are going to look at the conversion or the solar energy conversion or converting solar energy uh, from the sources, uh, and that one, is now what uh, we're going to look at.